Today, we're going to build this quirky website. We will use HTML, CSS, and let's see here. Yes, some images, of course. Join me and I'll throw in a tacky button animation in the end to make everything come alive a little bit more. If you want to check out the code yourself, I've added a link to it in the description, uh, but with other images since these seem to be licensed. Let's start by setting up a folder with our files. First, we need to create a folder where we will keep the files for the website. I've prepared one here. Then we will need to fetch the images and I like to put them in their own separate folder called assets so that we keep our root folder nice and tidy. What we want to do now is to fire up our text editor of choice. I like to use Visual Studio Code, but what you prefer is up to you, of course. We need an index.html where we will have our HTML code and a CSS file, index.css, where we will put our CSS stylings. If we go into index.html, we start by adding some boilerplate. First, a line explaining to the browser that this is an HTML document. And next, an HTML tag. After that, we will add the head of our HTML document. This is where we put meta tags and mostly things we need to tell the browser, like if we want to fetch a style sheet, which we want, we can put the link to it here. Under the head tag, we can add a body tag. And this is where we will put all our content. We can start by adding a small hello world to see that everything works. Great. Let's add some sections. It looks like we'll need four. I'm thinking that we will add styling later to center the contents in every section. So let's add a div in here that will be centered later. We start with the first section and add an h1 tag, a subtext as a span, a call to action button, and the image that tells the story of our website. Don't forget to add proportions and an alt property if the image can't load for some reason. I'm thinking that we can use a flex layout here that will center everything in a column. Put a class on the div that holds our text and image so that we can style it later. Our next section is a bit more horizontal, but if we can think of it in terms of boxes, we can put the text and button in a div with a column layout and align the content to the left. This div and the image will need to be put horizontally, so we can use a flexbox here as well, but use the row layout and push them away from each other. If we hop down to the third section, we have kind of a similar layout as our last one, but the image and the text contents are reversed. So let's put the image first and the text after and it should be good to go. The last section is a nice column layout like our first section, but with a bigger button. So let's go ahead and put the H2 tag in the top, a button with a big class on it so we can make it a bit bigger and the image just below. Oh, and by the way, give the video a like if you enjoy the content. All right, now we have our HTML in place. Let's hop into the CSS file and style our website. Let's start from the least specific parts of our HTML and then venture down to the specific parts. In the bottom of our website, we have the body, which we can use to set our font family for all the tags we have inside the body. Inside the body, we have four sections. I'll give them min height to create some space and make sure that the contents of each section will be in focus when you scroll through the website. We also add a display grid with a place content center here to center the contents of the section. From our sketch, we can see that the contents are at most 1065 pixels wide, so we put that restriction inside the centered div. As a default, we make the div into a top-aligned flexbox that has some nice gap and space between the contents. If you remember our first and last section, they were more of a column layout. So let's style the class we created for those two here. Add a flex direction column and center the contents. Now let's style our headings. The H1 will only be in the first section. Let's make it big. I mean, it should make a statement. We can use the sibling selector to target the span right after the H1 tag and give it a bit bigger font size. The H2 tag should be a bit smaller than the H1, maybe three Ms but have the same thickness. Just like the span after the H1, we can style the span after the H2 and give it some room with margin and a bigger font size. The last but most fun part, the buttons. Let's give it an orange background color like in the sketch and a thick black border, some padding, bold font weight, a font size of one M's and to be able to center the heart, we have in the button, we need to add a flexbox and center align the content. Let's give the image some room. I hope you didn't forget, but we also had a big button in the bottom section. 
let's give the class we created a bigger font size and some more thickness to the border. The image should probably be a little bit bigger as well. Now they look good, but nothing happens when you hoover them, which is uh, kind of boring. Let's give them some life. Add a colon hoover pseudo class to the button and let's scale it just a tiny bit so it doesn't overwhelm the user. Wouldn't it be fun if we did something with the heart as well? Let's uh, try rotating it. Oh, and don't forget to add a transition property so the changes aren't instant. There we go, and this is how the site ended up. Thanks, bye.